Fancy intro music, yeah! Woohoo! Hey there, Star Trek Fleet Command fans, and welcome back to another video for today. We are talking about the D7, but sorry, the Bordas. At least they got the follow up ship right, the Katinga. But yeah, let's talk about the Bordas. And we're going to focus on, so I've already unlocked the Bordas on like all my accounts. So what we're going to focus on instead is one, admiring the beauty that is the Bordas. Like you, you, you're not watching a good Rick Duels video unless you're watching a nice, roundabout just like look at the sweeping beauty of it and to be honest in terms of models in the game that they've got right this is a gorgeous model of the d7 even if it isn't that like traditional gray green weird 1970s look it's a very beautiful ship absolutely gorgeous fatal flaw um the neck makes no sense but hey it's star trek so the Bordas is a battleship, obviously, that is, number one, fantastic when it comes to hostile grinding. It's actually one of the best ships in the game for that, especially early on as you're going to level up in tier. Now, this is on my level 28 account from Server 32. Shout out, Server 32. And I've got a basic PvP crew loaded out right now with Kumak as captain, Nero, and then Decius for that nice cumulative build of damage. But there are several different ways you can load it out. The main reason, and I talk about this a lot, you, you hear me say battleships are great for hostile grinding. Well, many of you are probably going, well, what makes a battleship so good for hostile grinding? Well, the answer is actually right above me. The defense and health stats for the ship, particularly the health. So the health translates into hull health in terms of how much you can survive in a, an attack. Essentially, if you are fighting against hostiles, the more hull you have, the longer you're going to last. Because even if you go against the weakest hostiles for your you know, daily grind, which for some of you, it might be you got to go kill, say, 32s. But if you got to kill 32s, then the more hull you have, then the longer you're going to last. Assuming you're using the same crew setups and everything like that. So what I'm saying is, compared to, say, an Explorer, which like my Centurion, which we can go ahead and go over to the second, see the Centurion is two tiers higher, does have more health in this instance, but you just scroll it back and you can see there's two-tier difference but this ship is going to perform better than my centurion is as a whole tier to tier because of the style of ship it is do we need to go ahead and repair some of these i was attacked forgot to put on a shield it happens no big deal so let's go into some crew managements as well as talking about cost so because i don't have it to tier up what i'll do is i'll use l cars here and we'll throw up the cost of tiers one through five of the Bordas, what it costs to tear up to that range. And you'll really learn if you watch some of my more recent videos that this is actually not a lot. Looking at the first couple tiers, you're not spending a ton of resources. Even at tier six, going to tier seven, weapons costing, you know, about 70 ish rares and a little bit of trit and deal. So nothing too crazy compared to some of the ships that will pull out that will be costing thousands of rares. Oof, big oof. But as you can look at those costs, hopefully they give you a better idea of what it is like to field a borders. But let's talk officers. Officers are the most important aspect of this game. And right now, like I said, Nero's crew with a Decius sidecar. And I need to upgrade my Decius so I get more from Honor Guard here, knocking up to 7%. But remember, this is a cumulative stack. And the reason this is actually so handy is, let's go back to the upgrade menu, is the firing pattern and type of weapons that this ship has. So you have the energy weapon up here. I know it says left kinetic cannon. This is the energy weapon. Scroll it, scroll it. So you can see this fires every round with a pure reshot. And then you have two kinetic weapons right here and the cannons, uh, the right kinetic cannon and another right kinetic cannon. I don't know why there's two right kinetic cannons. It's clearly not like that. There's disruptors on the sides and the torpedo and the nose. It's the same way as Bar the Borel is, Scopely. It's literally the same layout. But anyway, you see your kinetics here, recharge time of two with one shot, and then over here, recharge time of two with one shot. So we'll take our log and you can see a firing pattern of this in action. But essentially, one of the things that the Bordas has above a lot of other battleships is because it's kinetic base, you can run different loadouts that focus on increasing that kinetic damage. Now remember, kinetics are typically going to do some very nice overall damage. As you scroll up here, on the energy weapon, you see 12 and 14 is the max. Where on the kinetics, you're going to see 29 and 35. 
Now, even if you went times two on the energy weapon, because, you know, it takes two rounds to reload this kinetics, even at times two, you're not doing as much as you are right here. Kinetics typically do more damage, but they have really weird firing patterns on most ships. This one is a simply a firing pattern every two rounds, but this means that we can change out our crew loadouts and do things like running our Gorkon crew on here and focusing on kinetic builds. So running something like a Gorkon Kurla Khan loadout would actually be beneficial on a Bordas for PvP because it has kinetic weapons and that makes it a very unique ship in Star Trek Fleet Command as a battleship because we can compare it to other battleships and see, well, that's not how they all are. Like, for example, let's pull out the Kamari and look at its weapons types. You have one kinetic weapon and two energy weapons. So though it's not really conducive to run a kinetic based system, but when you have two out of three of your weapons being kinetic, that really kind of changes the, you know, uh, entire range of officer sets that you can run. The Bordas is one of the best ships in the game early on, especially as a base cracker, because you can do so much with it. It's not limited to certain roles. You know, that the Saladin being the Saladin makes it the best ship in the 20s, but the Bordas has a legitimate argument for being just as good in a lot of ways because of versatility. And officer versatility is one of those reasons. You can load it out in a variety of ways that take on different enemies. Now, I did get asked if you could make an anti-Saladin loadout on here. It is technically possible, but super difficult. Like, su super difficult. Um, see, I'm trying to load up underneath here. I don't have enough yet, and I don't have prime officers, so that really struggle busts me here on this account. Really don't focus on trying to be Saladins. Focus on... One, being a great PvE grinder. Cadet Uhura, Cadet McCoy, and then Chin. Go kill explorers. Explorers are about the easiest hostile that you can grind with. And then in PvP, pick your targets of what you want to fight. So we're going to take out a log real quick, and we're going to go kill just a random ship and look at how the firing pattern works in a battle log and look at just how effective it could be. All right, here you go. And check out this battle log. Now, remember, I did not use an anti-hostile loadout. It's just a regular loadout. One round. See, 48,000, then we got hit. Plus six. And then the Bordas is mitigating. Plus six right there. Delete the shields. 129. So there's your kinetic weapon. So energy, kinetic, kinetic. And then we're getting a double Decius. That's that's unusual. Okay. Anyway, figure that out later. You can see the general effect there of the work. In terms of damage per round, though, that's actually pretty nice. That's, that's a pretty decent DPR for a tier six ship that has no weapons actually updated. I haven't updated any of the weapons on this ship yet, just the armor. And remember, as you go up a couple levels, if uh, we have the resources, do we have enough resources in the bank? Oh, we do. Until I haven't logged into here in a while. Tell you what, you get a surprise ending on this video where we're actually going to... Uh, Upgrade some stuff. Upgrade. 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 And then the cargo bay. Upgrade. So blow through some Latin. There. Let's take it to tier 7 and show you the difference in progression, especially when you add the officer XP into the equation. Let's go ahead and max that out. Okay. So overall, you did see an increase, but here's going to be the big one. When we hit this button here, watch the health continue to rise for five levels, getting us close to 280K. Now we're at tier seven, and an armor upgrade there will take us to almost 300,000. And let's go ahead and do that, just so we can show the comparison of that versus the Centurion, which I had that as tier eight. Now... Already, we're getting closer to the Centurion in terms of overall. You see, the damage is actually getting right on top of the Centurion. I, I thought it was actually lower than the Cent, but I was wrong there. So the DPR is a little bit better than the Centurion is, while also getting more and more whole health. Let's see if we can go ahead and uh, let's, let's solve this mystery there, gang. Scooby and the gang here. Turn in all of these and some of the... Yeah, just do that one. Bam. Convert. We are going to uh, have to give away some resources to some people out in Server 32. If you're on Server 32 and you're interested in raiding my base, just let me know. And uh, we will let you get some goodies because that's what we do. We, we kind of pay it forward. I don't use this account much at all. So, 
and it's never leaving level 28. So these are kind of not doing me any good here. All right, upgrade. Now let's go ahead and take it up to level 40. Remember we have officer slots I gotta go in and fill now. So yeah, here at 40, and then let's fill in the officers. We got two slots. We're just gonna fill in what the biggest and best is that we have available, which is going to be in terms of, Yuki is going to give us a little bit there for defense and attack. And then let's throw on Merrick as well, just for more of an attack focus. Remember, attack and defense are what you want to focus on for the Bordas. Not as much defense unless you have an, off, an officer that requires defense to build upon. So there's that. And now we can do a straight comparison. So 315, 257, 320, and then 296, 299. So less shield, a little less hull but more attack already at the same tiers. So that DPR, very important. Remember, I did tell you that the Legionary it has more hull health than the Bordis, but the Bordis just has so much attack, which is one of the reasons it's so good. So we've gone over build costs. We've gone over a few different, or a couple different officer loadouts, and we've gone over the why it's so good in the game and what it's so useful for. If you have any questions about the Bordis or any other type of ship in the game or officers or anything, you know what to do, comment section below. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that join button if you will support us. And maybe even check out the Teespring store where we've got some pretty neat merch. T-shirts, masks, because you need to be wearing a mask wherever you go now, according to most states. And uh, everything else. We love you. Live long and prosper. Stay safe out there, Space Cowboys. And remember, shoot first. Yeah, do that. Pew, pew. An even better outro than the intro. Yeah! Woo!